Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. Is the latest of our video calls. We've been chatting with everybody while we're all stuck at home at the minute, and I'm delighted to say from the offspring, Dexter and Noodles join me now. How are you, gentlemen? Good, James. Hello. How's it going? Yeah, good to see you guys. Good to see you. You know, I'll start this off in the way we've kind of started all of these off, uh, which to, of course, say I hope you guys, hope your loved ones, you're all staying safe, staying well throughout all the madness of the last 12 months or so. And I guess before we kind of get into music, just how have you found this extended period at home, guys? Imagine with your touring schedule, this is the longest at home in a while, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, fortunately, we're in a, we're in a good position to weather this storm, but uh we, we sure do miss get out, getting out and uh, traveling and playing live shows, um, for sure. Yeah, it definitely looks like, at least from the stuff you guys have been putting online, what with the, the cover versions and some green screen fun, at least you get a chance to, I suppose, have a bit of fun that you wouldn't necessarily be doing, right? Yes, you can tell we've been bored, can't you? Right? Yeah. We, <laughs> we covered a song on Tiger King. It's this outrageous reality show. I'm not even sure if it's out Side the U.S. You know, but. Yeah. Oh no, we've seen it. That's okay, a worldwide good. phenomenon. Don't you worry. He okay. has made it worldwide now. It's all yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Somebody needed to cover one of those songs. I saw some dad posted a video of him and his kids watching the. He puts it on. He's he's puts it on with his really young child, and she wants to see the kitty video, and she's rocking out. She knows all the parts. Then his daughter comes in dancing around. Then his son comes in dancing around. This whole family, right? this whole family's watching. Wow! Yeah, our version yeah, of your kid. See, kid. we're bringing kids together. Bring people so, together. Kid, kid approved. Yeah, it was a funny video. I tweeted that out today. And yeah, nice helping out the families in this strange time, bringing them all together. That's some good family entertainment right there. Um, well, let's let's get into music, man. I mean, this is really, really exciting. The new album is kind of imminent at the time of recording here. Um, I guess the first question is where did this finally clip you guys? I've heard various timelines. I know you maybe had some songs back in almost like 2013, maybe. When did you feel like, yep, yeah, this is ready to go. This is the collection of songs we want. It's been a work in progress. Yeah. That's for sure. I mean, I'd say the majority of it's been done over the last couple of years, but there are some things that really took a while to kind of get in shape. And that's just kind of part of the recording process for us now. I mean, we, we have the luxury that we don't have to bang something out in a month. So if it doesn't feel right, we just kind of sit on it. And uh, it just didn't feel right all the way for a whole album until really about a year ago. But at that point, we're like, well, we, maybe now's not the best time to put it out with the pandemic coming on. And we sort of sat on it and kept on tweaking it for a year. I'm really glad now that we had the time to, because I think we raised the bar on the whole album just a little bit more. And here we are a year later thinking, well, who knows when this is going to end? Let's just put it out because, I mean, it's been long enough. Yeah, I think people definitely need the distraction and the entertainment now, for sure. It makes a lot of sense to put it out now. And that's interesting. You say, though, tweaking while you have that time at home. I guess that's always going to be a temptation when you don't have necessarily the set release date you want. What did you find yourself changing over this last year? Right. Well, what do they say? Records are never truly finished. They're abandoned. They're abandoned. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. You could go on forever and ever well uh, and, and i want to say even wouldn't you say honestly about two or three years ago we thought well we're we're pretty close to being done and then at that time all of a sudden we got in the studio and had this really kind of creative you know time where we were kind of with brand new songs just you know we'd come in and like at the end of the day we'd have a whole new song um and that happened quite a bit over that time over the last couple of years and then we you know we were definitely going okay we're close we, we just got to you know, top this off and we're ready to put it out. And then the pandemic hit. So then we're like, well, let's relook at everything. We just, there's always things you can do tweaking little parts. There's one part that I hear something rubbing in this one part that I really wish we did differently, you know, and you can go in and fix that or, or just sometimes it's just levels of something, you know, a lot of it was just levels. It's just, yeah, yeah but they're minor things that maybe most people wouldn't even notice, but yeah. to us, it made a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I mean, I want to dive into the single that's, of course, out there now. It's the title track. It's Let the Bad Times Roll. Um, I, I guess the obvious question there is why take that song as being the title for the record as a whole? What do you think it is about that particular track that's summed up what you want to put out in the world with this new record? Well, the phrase sums up the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Over, the, over the last the last few years and, you know, while, you know, it looks like hopefully better times are on the horizon, we're still... We're so the bad times are rolling still, I think. Yeah. So, uh, well, like you, you made the point that it's not just we've been handed this shit show that we don't really have any control over. Might as well make the most of it. On top of that, we have uh, world leaders that are that are in 
don't seem to want to change anything for the better. They're like, you know, let's let's they're rolling the bad times. And, you know, this is yeah. this is fucking no joke. This is yeah. like the world's in a bad place right now. And I have felt like the leaders are not really trying to make it better. Like not the way they should, not the way they would have a generation ago. Uh, I think this yeah. idea of working together with people on the, the opposite side of the political spectrum has just gone out the window. Democracy has been taking a hit. The, the idea that we can all get together and through, you know, uh, uh, shared ideas and, and shared concern for each other, we can get through this. So it seems to be people are just like, oh, no, fuck you. We, we won this election and you go fuck yourself. And that's, that's <laughs> not, you know, that's not right. You know, or, uh, we're in power. We don't want to hear from you. You know, you can't, yeah. you can't, you can't have a, yeah. a, a civilized society that way. And, and that's, that's heavy. And that's a serious message that we wanted to get across. And at the same time, I mean, geez, you can only hammer that so long before you're just the bummer at the party. Right. So I think that's the flip side of the same statement. Let the bad times roll. is almost kind of like we're here. We got to roll with the punches a little bit. And the chorus of that song kind of sums it up, makes it a little bit lighter. And uh, so it just, it, it kind of felt like, this is what the tone of the record should be. This is the underlying message of the whole thing. Yeah, it's got a really upbeat tone too. But I thought it was interesting, the quote that's kind of doing the rounds of the minute in all these you know, press releases and when everything launches. Uh, Dexter, you were saying it's the most cathartic record you think you guys have ever done. I wonder if you could expand a little bit on that. What is it you think about this particular collection you've been working on that felt so cathartic to you? Yeah. You know, when, when we were coming up and listening to bands, it, punk bands spoke to us the most because they would, they weren't afraid to talk about things that weren't happy. You know, it was definitely way different than other popular forms of music at the time. Right. And it really resonated with me because it felt like, well, for one, someone else understands what I'm feeling. Right. But it was, there was also a way of kind of like, it helped you to get the feeling out in a way, just by listening to the song or, or getting with the song. And, and I find that we, we get these kinds of messages from our fans when we do something that, dark, even something that I think maybe is too dark. If I'm writing a song about suicide or something, I'll hear from kids or people that just say, this song really helped me get through a tough time in my life. Or, you know, people sometimes like, you know, and I don't know if I can really accept this fully when they say this album saved my life, you know, like right. that's a really nice thing to say. And uh, really gone away is the one song that, that, that kind of makes sense, you know, but you can't, you can't think of that when you're, when you're creating a song, you know, you just try to have an honest, uh, you know, telling of, of a feeling, an emotion, an idea. You can't worry about what effects that's going to have on people. But that being said, we, we do get a lot of people that say Gone Away is just a, a very meaningful song to them. And it kind of makes sense because it's about such a serious topic, you know, and, and that's something we've been doing a lot in our live version, stripping it down and doing this piano version and so, you know, we tried to keep that. I don't remember what the question was, but, <laughs> but <laughs> that's, that's how we ended up, you that's how we ended up doing. I hope that our album is yeah. cathartic to other people the way that our God, bands I knew there was I knew there was a tie in. I just couldn't remember what it was. It but was. Yeah, but honestly, got we've had fans ask for a, a studio recorded piano version of Gone Away for, for a number of years now because we have been doing it live. And we thought, you know what, that sounds like a great idea. It was very I know you weren't entirely comfortable just in the range it, it, you had to sing it in and it, you know, everything, it kind of puts you in a different, in a different place yeah. that, that you've never done before. You've never been before. So yeah. we, we encouraged him to, to go there. And, and I think, I think it was worth it. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's definitely a standout moment for many reasons on there. And I'm, I'm glad you kind of mentioned it because I guess it must, even though you have been playing it live for quite a few years in that slightly different format, it must still be quite daunting to know that that is a song that not only is a classic of yours and obviously very popular with the audience, but like you've said, means a great deal because of the subject matter to people as well. Did it, did it feel daunting at all to go back and revisit and think, God, better not, better not mess this up, I guess. Better not mess it up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think better not mess this, mess this up for sure. It felt, uh, I mean, I guess, honestly, it felt vulnerable, right? To try mm -hmm. to do a song like this where the vocal is so laid out there. You know, we're used to being in a rock band where loud guitars cover up all our all our, our mistakes exactly. and, and our insecurities. Exactly. Yeah, you know. Right? But this is like, well, no, there's no hiding it. You're you're out there just yeah. um, trying to deliver this lyric in a, in a meaningful way. And that was, uh, it was scary. It took, you know. I had to really dim the lights in the studio. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Came off well in the end, though, guys. Came off well Thank you. in the end. Uh, the other track I want to mention, of course, that people will have heard is Coming For You, which, you know, was released quite a few years back now. Um, I guess there's a temptation, even though it was very successful at the time, 
when you're putting out a new release like this, maybe there's a temptation to think, oh, we'll just leave that one off. But what is it about that track for you guys that really endured and, and you think makes it fit perfectly within this album? I mean, I'd say I just we just wanted the fans to have it. Um, yeah. It was never included on any collection. It was kind of just as simple as that. But we were always proud of the song. And it was kind of that was really done at a time when people thought, fuck albums, just put out singles. Who cares? Yeah, you know, yeah. no one's going to yeah. buy an album. Anyway, why put all that work in? And it had been a few years since we'd put out anything. And so we did put out the single and and I liked the song a lot and I was proud of it and stuff, but it just didn't feel the same. It was kind of like a turning point for us where all of a sudden it was like, you know, this isn't the way I want our band to operate. I think we're, we're a band and we make records and that's what we should do. Right. When that, when that came, you're talking about coming for you, right? We yeah. have, to, you have to make sure I'm on the same page. <laughs> when that song came out, we were recording, you know, off and on and you were, go, you were going to school, getting your PhD but I think we always intended to have a full length record that that would be part of. Um, at least I remember saying that in interviews, unless I was, <laughs> well, we were, we were talking about, should we just do an EP? You know, that's what we everyone did, else yeah, is doing. Yeah, we discussed it, but you know, I always thought the, I thought the idea was eventually to have a, have a whole record out. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you stuck to that. <laughs> Thank you for guiding that's us. That's my, that. that's yeah. my memory and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. yeah. The guiding lights got there <laughs> yeah. in the end. Yeah. Got there in the end. <laughs> Brought it through. Um, and speaking of, you know, of kind of looking back with things like Gone Away and stuff, I do want to mention as well, the other thing you kind of celebrated recently, it was the 20th anniversary of Conspiracy of One, of course. And I just wanted to get some kind of reflection on that time because I certainly feel like I remember when that record came out, it felt like particularly in the UK, that was a real moment for you guys. You know, it was festival headlines. It was, you know, all these kind of big, big moments over here, particularly with the UK audience. Uh, what do you kind of remember of that time, I suppose, about those shows, that kind of reception for, you know, what clearly remains one of your classics in the discography? Yeah, that was a real busy, busy time for us because really... Uh, Ixnay, Americana, and Conspiracy of One kind of came hot on the heels of, of each other. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably less time between Americana and Conspiracy than any other record we've done. Yeah. Um, I mean, Americana just kind of took off for us, which was really great. Huge, but it, was, yeah. it was almost like when Conspiracy of One came out, that's when it all kind of came in and all of a sudden we were doing Wembley and stuff that we had never done before. So right. it was kind of like, it did kind of feel like our biggest moment in the UK. Which well, Americana was like number two on all the charts. So we called the tour that year, the Smells Like Number Two Tour. <laughs> That's right. That's and, right. And then we rolled that right into the Conspiracy of One Tour. Oh, um, Smells Like Two, Conspiracy of One. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> the signs were all there. You were hinted all along. The signs were all there of what was coming next. Yeah. Like, <laughs> unexpected places. <laughs> and I guess, you know, when whenever you know bands tend to revisit or look back or reissue these ton of albums, I do find it's inevitable that it sort of feeds in some way into what you guys do next, even if it's just in terms of when we next play live, we should do that song again. Have there been any thoughts like that when you've been looking back on conspiracy recently? Yeah, but I mean, I, that's that's the struggle with all our, our old discography is, oh, man, we got to be playing these these songs more often. You know, we've we've done all the records from well, from we've done Ignition, Smash, Ixnay and Americana all in their entirety now. At one point um, or another. At one point. Yeah. I mean, some of them only once or twice. I think Ixnay, I mean, we only did once, maybe the, the whole thing once. Yeah. Um, you know, but we haven't done Conspiracy of One yet. I'd love to do that. But yeah, there's always these songs like, oh man, I wish I wish we played that more. I would love for that to be part of the set. The struggle is getting everybody's favorite song into every set, you know? Um, yes, this, yeah. these are our problems. We just have yeah. too many well-known songs. For... I had this guy come up and <laughs> scream at me in, in Montreal one time. How come you don't play Smash? And he meant the song Smash screamed in my ear and then stormed out of the bar this is just at a bar <laughs> after a show see Montreal. you can really you can really irritate people yeah if you, if you don't, play, you don't play that one song you get a drunk guy screaming at you at two yeah. in the morning that one dude with his arms folded at the back of the club that night like oh what's yeah, this guy now we know that guy thank, almost thank there. god he wasn't carrying a shank right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah right could have ended very wrong could have ended very wrong uh i mentioned there you know the the kind of relationship with the uk obviously i know you guys were meant to be out for for download festival last year and everything which of course very understandably didn't end up happening but you must feel that reaction every time you guys come over and play here live the love's still there and it, it feels like it never went away talk to me a little bit about that relationship specifically with 
with uh, with UK fans. It feels feels kind of different from the rest of the world for some reason. There's a certain sense of humor that that you find in the UK. You, you know, it's it's a predominant sense of humor that I think you're always taking the piss, right? You know, uh, it's very sarcastic. You're you're finding the humor and shit that's not really funny. You know, um, yeah, that's like, a great like point. what we've seen the last four years. And and I think so. We've always kind of connected with that. Um, you, you know, the festival audiences are just brilliant. Just so much fun. Huge, over the top. Um, going back to if the, the first thing, I don't know what was the first festival we did, but we've done Reading and Reading. Leeds a bunch. We've done uh, Donington, you know, the Monsters of Rock now, and download of just course. Download, yeah, download now. Even Glastonbury, way back in the day. So yeah. the festival thing was huge for us, and I think it got us, it got them to know us, I guess, by going back and doing mm-hmm. Reading a few times and stuff. And it's just been great ever since. And it's not just the festivals. We've we've done everything from theaters to like the the clubs and it's yeah. um, the shows are just Brixton awesome. Academy was awesome. I think we played there the night before the Brexit vote and we oh, did gosh. we covered should I stay or should I go <laughs> yeah. the clash for, we did for that we did yeah. and they went nuts it was hilarious yeah. they really got they got the joke so yeah. thank nice you touch. nice touch that one I like thank that. you for giving us the material. <laughs> um, before I let you guys go, you know, I've got to kind of ask what's next. I, I have found with a lot of these conversations we've been having, because there's no touring at the moment, we hope it comes back soon. But, you know, everyone's just kind of been sat around thinking, ah, what else can we do? What else can we put out there? Obviously, this record's still to drop, which is the most exciting part. But have you already thought about what might come next or any little side things going on? What can you tell us? You know, our, our primary hope is that we get to go out on the road soon, but we're always discussing different ideas, you know, talking about maybe doing the live stream thing, which we would do if we could make it really exceptional. Um, a lot of times some of the live things, it looks like watching a live show on YouTube, you know, which which I do. <laughs> I do that a lot, but, you know, we, we want it to be a little bit more than that. So there's, we're, you know, talking about doing things like that. Um, over the last couple of years, we've been doing some acoustic shows, which have been really fun. Uh, do that in a, in a smaller club, and it's a little bit more intimate and more of like us telling stories and sitting around a campfire playing acoustic guitars. Um, hopefully, we get to do some more of that. That's always really fun. But of course, what we really want to do is get out there and play shows. And unfortunately, we just don't know when that's going to happen. Once it's yeah. safe for all of us to get together, though, we're we're on it. Until then, everyone, please stay safe. Uh, I've heard you guys might be some of the first people we come see because you guys are doing so well on your yeah. vaccination. Congratulations. I mean, fingers, fingers crossed. We're hopeful that there might be some shows this year. Wouldn't that be a lovely, lovely thing? And I, and I guess you guys, again, will be in a position that a lot of bands will be in where, uh, unlike previous tours, perhaps, by the time you guys are hitting the road, everyone's going to know this record inside out, back to front. It's going to be a nice kind of different reaction for you, I suppose. Which is great. Yeah. So they can spend some time with it. I wish I wish we were out on the road right now, though. That being said, <laughs> you know, oh, I really gotcha. do. Gotcha, yeah. of course. Yeah. On the live stream front as well, actually, I'll leave you with this. Is there anything that's particularly caught your eye? What I've loved is how every single live stream show by every single band has been very radically different and really tailored to what they're trying to do. Have there been any you guys have watched over these last few months that have uh, particularly caught your eye? I did one with this this uh, a group of friends, punk rock karaoke, Stan from the Dickies, Randy from Pennywise, Greg from from uh uh well from everything circle jerks and darren from goldfinger and they had these backdrops that were really funny and they did this this ramon song and it was like this this uh mediterranean island and people stand up paddle boarding in blue seas and i'm like why are they why are they showing this island this beautiful like tropic vacation island it was crete and they were doing Crete and Hop, the Ramones song. Wow. <laughs> like, hey. Oh my God. So, it was a stretch. So I thought that was brilliant. A for effort. Yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> yeah. The kind of things you can get away with on a green screen that you never would have thought yeah. about a proper show, man. That's crazy. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, it's really nice to chat to you. Congratulations on the new record. And like I say, we just look forward to seeing you guys in the UK whenever that's possible. We hope sooner rather than later. But yeah, in the meantime, stay safe out there. We'll chat to you soon. Thanks, James. Good chat to you guys. All right, the awesome.